recognition between other clients uh, regarding the relevant
here with the capillary, uh, and the extra capillary means here outside the capillary wall. So extra capillary hypercellularity increase in number of cells outside the capillary. And lastly, and this is the in this, in this case of uh, any reason of this, that we can find an advanced polymerular sclerosis. Uh, first, uh, first uh, finding that we can find in the, in the uh, biopsy when we examined it, that we see no abnormality, uh, that the numerous is completely normal. Uh, so we shift to another technique to, 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 to support uh, the presence of a pathology. So we, we first we shift to the immunofluorescence examination, uh, and the immunofluorescence or immunofluorescence chemistry an important positive as well as negative finding. Uh, the negative finding, if we find no deposit by immunofluorescence, so uh, this is normal or no disease or minimal change in disease. We can find immunoglobulin deposition in the mesangial like this. Uh, 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 mesangial deposition of immunoglobulin, either immunoglobulin alone or in association with, with complement or only complement. Here, this is the mesangial site, as we described in the first slide. We can also find the deposit not in the mesangial, but here in the capillary wall. Uh, in, in, in rare diseases or individual, uh, rare, rarely encountered disease, we can find just one type of immunoglobulin. Uh, you know, we examine immunoglobulins for immunoglobulins. Uh, which type, which are the immunoglobulins that can be deposited in the DNA? One can give me. What is the immunoglobulin that we search in immunoglobulin? We search for three types. Immunoglobulin A, immunoglobulin M, and all immunoglobulin B. And, and the complement is C3. So we can find either of these in immunofluorescence uh, examination. Uh, we, uh, then we can shift to, to the electron microscope uh, that uh, we reveal the following uh, abnormality. Um, here, if there is just a uh, food process effacement, this is also the capillary permeate brain, we just find this effacement of the food process and the histology is completely normal, so this case is minimal, it changes disease. Early membranes, when the membranes is, is early and the thickness cannot be appreciated by light microscopy, we can very, very fine subepithelial deposit in the uh, the subject at the, at the capillary wall in the case of mild membranous uh, dermatopathy. Uh, a myelidosis, when it is early, cannot be detected except by light microscopy, we can detect these findings. Uh, my, uh, a new complex pulmonary nephritis, when it is early or it is more, can find this finding when it is resolved or become uh, about to fade or treated. Uh, we can find the glomerulus about uh, more or less normal. If we shift to electron microscopy, we can find uh, mild, mild uh, subimmunotelial ending. Uh, Think glomerular basement membrane lesion that occur in airport or hereditary nephritis cannot be appreciated or detected just by electron microscopy to measure the thickness of the basement membrane to find thick areas and thin areas alternating with each other. Uh, on, uh, again, we say also by electron microscopy, we can find uh, completely normal and no deposit, or no abnormality. Here, the full process is not effaced and perfect. So, this picture excluding the renal disease. We, uh, for this picture, this patient have no evidence of renal disease. Uh, mean, uh, diffuse effacement of full process, minimal change in disease, or early membranes, as we said before. Uh, and here we find hereditary uh, nephritis and thin basement membrane uh, nephropathy. That we find areas of thin basement membrane alternated with thick basement membrane. Uh, we shift to the next uh, abnormality find uh, by uh, in, in, on examining the renal biopsy. Uh, if we find thick capillary wall, just thickening, thickening of the capillary wall without associated hypercellular. For us as a pathologist, this means for me uh, one pathology which is membranous polymerulopathy. 
like this. We have uh, the basement membrane is thickened, and the thickness is uh, more or less regular, and no associated hypersimilarity or misogynism. No, no other abnormal just we have patent basement membrane. On uh, neurofluorescence, it has a specific type. In electron microscopy, you find this sub-epithelial dense deposit, this one, a sub-epithelial deposit. Uh, but, but there is some other condition that many membranous nephropathy just to know that is taken in basement <coughs> is not restricted. If more than 90% it will be remembered. But there is some real condition as eclampsia and really eclampsia from botic microangiopathy and what's called fibrillary pulmonary nephritis. Uh, from botic microangiopathy uh, can be seen in different condition. Uh, here we not find, there is no deposit in the basement membrane, but the thickness is due to widening of sub endothelial space, like this one, and here is the endothelial cell. So we have just widening of the sub endothelial cell. In fibrillary glomerular nephritis, we will detect these macro tubules or fibrils, and in the eclampsia is similar to thrombotic macroangiopathy, we have no deposit, but just the endothelial. The second uh, lesion we can find in the uh, biopsy that we can find the combined lesion of thickened basement membrane associated with increase in cell number. And this is the perfect or common example for us in the membrane of left nephritis with type 1 and type 2. This is classic picture, a nice one for membrane of left nephritis. Uh, the tuft is divided or lipulated, or the glomerulus is hyper, uh, is accentuation of the lipulation, and here is increase in cell number and mesangial expansion, and the basement membrane is thickened. Uh, and here is type 2, membrane of left nephritis, or the density deposit disease. We cannot say that this is density deposit disease except by electron microscopy. Uh, uh, here is when in membrane blood, we find the, the deposit of mineral blood energy and C3. In density deposit, we find just C3 only deposited in intramembranes. Like here, the deposit are density deposit intramembranes. But in membrane blood, there is a sub endothelial deposit and interposition of the mesangial cell to insinuate itself uh, beneath the basement membrane at the paramesangial area. So this is membrane blood glomerular nephritis and then she deposit disease. Uh, this morphology of membrane blood glomerular nephritis can be encountered in patients with lupus nephritis, class three and class four. It's the same, the same morphology and the same deposit. Uh, lupus nephritis on electron microscopy uh, is a disease that finds the deposit and we can find uh, the deposit in every place. Okay. Classically, for wire loop or plus code, we find that there was a sub endothelial, dense there was a sub endothelial, but also it may be associated with mesangia and sub endothelial deposit. And here is a fibrillary glomerulophritis. Uh, we can find uh, immunoglobulin G deposition and T3, and uh, the characteristic microtubular uh, structure in the electron microscope. This is AM pattern of immune complex deposition disease. Uh, immune complex uh, glomerular nephritis uh, classified according to the site of deposit. Uh, class 4 um, lupus nephritis, the deposit are sub endothelial. IgA nephropathy, the deposit is restricted to the mesangia. In post infections, there is sub epithelial hump or the deposit are, uh, in the sub epithelial region. Type 1 membrane of glomerular nephritis. The deposit is something new. Uh, uh, beside the classic time, uh, the classic diseases, membrane proliferative and tumors and uh, post infections in the immune complex, we can find also the fibrillary, glomerular nephritis, and the immune factor. Uh, have a specific PM finding. This is a nice picture for the immune factor for the macrotubular uh, structure. Uh, the, the, the next lesion that we can find in the glomerular disease is the increase in cell number. That may be focal or diffuse mesangial proliferation like IgA or, or some forms of focal segmental glomerular sclerosis. We can find endocapillary hypercellularity or there is diffuse proliferation. I, uh, that means uh, increase in cell number in every place, mesangial cell, endocellular cell, 
and intra intra luminal uh, inflammatory cells. And we can find increased similarity without prominent thickening of the basement membrane in, in membrane overlapping pulmonary nephritis with its three types. Uh, this uh, diagram uh, summarizes the glomerular lesions that we can find. We can find histological normal, histologically normal glomerular lines that can change with focal or diffuse or surgical proliferation. Uh, that also can change with focal or diffuse or proliferative or nucleotizing glomerular nephritis. If we divide the slide like this, in this way, we find this pathology in IgA nephropathy and in the sector of lupus nephritis tissue. Uh, this direction uh, means the severity of the glomerular lesion and go in this direction. The focal or diffuse proliferative or nucleotizing glomerular nephritis can progress to crescentic glomerular nephritis and this group, if we divide right here, occur mainly in ANCA associated glomerular nephritis and anti-GDM and in lupus nephritis and in a small sector of IgA And at the end of this small disease process by colonoscopy or by treatment, we can find uh, in the place of pathology focal or diffuse sclerosing glomerular nephritis. This is the same uh, slide, but with the pathology of every category. Here is the normal glomerulus, here is focal, focal. Here if there is a area normal like this and area affected like this. This is segmental, and if the contact it is uh, generalized. And here is the focal nucleotide or proliferative glomerulus. Here is the crescentic, and this is the scolaritic glomerulus. Membranoproliferative uh, glomerular nephritis, as we said before, type 1 and type 2, can be presented by this classic picture, or sometimes uh, it can be presented by nodules or locule in the, in the top. So, this okay in uh, this picture can be found in membranoproliferative type 1 or type 2. Uh, it can occur also in diabetic patients and in a rare uh, disease which is monoclonal immunoglobulin deposit disease. Electromacroscopy here is discriminatory. This is section in the tubular basement membrane. We read this is a uh, dense granular deposit at the tubular basement membrane. In diabetes, there is uh, thickening, thickness of the basement membrane without deposit. And here, as we said before, uh, dense, dense deposit at intramental mass site. And here is some endothelial uh, deposit. For patients with lupus nephritis, we can uh, encounter any of the previous uh, uh, of the previous biopsies that we talk about. We can have in class one normal glomerulus, class two we have uh, focal focal proliferative glomerular nephritis, class three and four we have membrane proliferative and or crescentic glomerular nephritis. Here is class four, and this is membranous glomerular uh, nephritis in class five. find a patient uh, with uh, evidence of infection. What is the glomerular nephritis time that can be encountered or complicated or caused by infection? Uh, we can find also no abnormality. The common example that all of us uh, know is um, the post-infectious uh, post glomerular nephritis. Uh, and a very common example that is usually find in the biopsy associated with HCV of membranoproliferative nephritis and membranous glomerulopathy. We can also uh, find crescentic glomerulopathy. Uh, the crescentic glomerulopathies are usually presented uh, in the, for that definition by rapidly progressive glomerulopathies. We find here large crescent, that is circumferential and obliterated <coughs> uh, The crescent glomerular nephritis uh, is a immunofluorescence case that we cannot define or classify the cause of disease except after making immunofluorescence. And the immunofluorescence, <coughs> according to the pattern and site of deposit, uh, the shape of the deposit and the site, we have three groups. Immune complex group, pussy immune that we cannot find any deposit or mild deposit by immunofluorescence, and this group have ANCA positive in more than 85%. And here, the anti-GBM, which is the lowest incidence in uh, cause of crescentic glomerular nephritis. 
next pathology encountered in the biopsy is the uh, segmental sclerosis. And segmental sclerosis, focal segmental glomerular sclerosis, we have diseases that have this name, which is focal segmental glomerular sclerosis, but also uh, segmental sclerosis can occur at the end of uh, any of the immune complex diseases, uh, like immune complex glomerular nephritis and associated when it is chronic or healed, it healed by focal segmental glomerular sclerosis. Hereditary glomerular nephritis also can find sclerosis in the glomerular. Uh, the focal segmental glomerular sclerosis usually no, not associated with, with increased cell number, but uh, some forms of focal segmental glomerular sclerosis is not one variant of disease, but it has uh, different variant according to the anatomical sign of the sclerosis. Uh, here is the perihyla when, when the sclerosis appears at the vascular pool. Here the site of the tubular pool. When there is sclerosis at this, at this site, we say deep vision or deep vision focal segmental glomerular sclerosis. When there is excess proliferation or increase in cell number of podocyte or visceral epithelial cell, like it, this is not a crescent, but this is a podocyte hypercase because the crescent must uh, be here from the parietal epithelial cell. And this uh, proliferation is, uh, some, some pathologists say for this pseudocrescent, or uh, hyperplasia of the visceral epithelial cells. And also focal segmental glomerular sclerosis have a variant of, which is cellular variant of focal segmental glomerular sclerosis. Uh, this is sketch show uh, the previous slide. Here is the pre-hyla. This is the glomerulus. Here is the vascular pool with the afferent and the afferent fluid uh, coming to the glomerulus. And this is the site of tubular pool. If the sclerosis is here, this is very high lab type. And if it's uh, toward the tip or the collecting pool, it is uh, focal segment and tip lesion. Uh, and if it is due to compression by the hyperplasia of the visceral epithelial cell, it is a collapsing type. And this is a cellular which has no specific sign for it, it can be occurred at anywhere in the room. The, the last abnormality uh, that we can encounter in the pathology is uh, the extracapillary hypersimulality, which have two types, the crescentic, like this one, uh, that is the crescent is the proliferation of the parietal epithelial cells that just lie uh, on the common space. And here is a collapsing variant of focal segmental, as we said say before, uh, hudocyte hyperplasia or pseudocrescent. Uh, this slide is um, uh, regarding discussing uh, crescentic or rapidly progressive glomerular nephritis according to the immunofluorescence. Uh, we have three groups for the immunofluorescence examination, either linear uh, glomerular desmoglobin staining that caused by anti-glomerular desmoglobin antibodies with or without CC. For this group, if there is one hemorrhage associated with this lesion, it is good pasteur syndrome. If there is no lung hemorrhage, it is anti uh, The third group is the pussy uh, immune or, or no, no significant uh, immune globulin in the pneumonia line, and this group is usually associated with anti positive. have uh, four groups. If there is no systemic vasculitis, it is pussy immune glomerular nephritis. If there is associated <coughs> and no asthma or granuloma, it is microscopic polyarthritis. If there is granuloma and no asthma, it is webinar granulomatosis. If there is asthma and uh, anti granuloma with asymphilia, this is what we call Sherby Strauss syndrome. And this group, uh, lowest group that affects the kidney, really can find the neural fluids. The third one is the immune complex that we have granular, non-linear polymerular skin for immunoglobulin and or complement to be in the next slide here. Group of granular or non or <coughs> granular, not linear polymerular skin for immunoglobulin or complement. Uh, if the immunofluorescence examination reveals IgE dominance, we have two diseases of this group. If there is no systemic vasculitis, it is IgE nephropathy. If there is vasculitis associated, it is phenoxonine pill. If we find a lot of immunoglobulin and complement all are present, associated with C1Q, this is lupus nephritis. If there is coarse granular capillary, 
uh, staying for C3, it is acute post infectious glomerulonephritis. If there is peripheral staining for C3 plus minus immunoglobulin G or M, it is membrane left glomerulonephritis type 1. And if we have capillary pan like and mesangial spherical of C3, it is type 2 or density deposition disease. For membranous glomerulonephritis, we have granular capillary wall staining for immunoglobulin G. This is the last one. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 